In this video, we're going to be looking at the tests we do for different biological molecules, sometimes just known as food tests. We're going to be investigating fruit juice, egg whites, starch, regular cooking oil, and we're also going to use distilled water as a control. The principle behind this is basically to find out if those different samples contain biological molecules such as starch, protein, etc. In order to do that, we're going to need to use DCPIP, ethanol, Benedict's reagent, Biorette, and also iodine. Let's start with the iodine test, which is the test for starch. First, take your iodine solution and add it dropwise to each of your samples. Notice that the iodine is a kind of orangey colour, and when we add it into our samples, that orangey colour remains. Until we add it to the starch solution, and there's a clear blue-black change in colour. We continue adding this to all of our samples, and amongst all of them, starch is the only one that shows a positive result. So, to summarise, we use iodine to test for the presence of starch. You add a drop wise to each of your samples, and it turns blue black if starch is present. Next, let's look at the Biorette test for the presence of proteins. Take your Biorette solution and add a drop wise to each of the samples. If we give it some time for the reaction to take place, we can see in the egg white it turns a sort of purplish violet colour, and that suggests that protein is present. So, to summarise, use Biorett solution to test for the presence of proteins, add it dropwise to your samples, and it'll turn purple or lilac colour if protein is present. The Benedict's test is the test for reducing sugars. Glucose is an example of a reducing sugar. First, you take your Benedict's reagent and you add it dropwise to each of your samples. It's a good idea to label each of your samples for this test because you're going to need to put them into a water bath and they might get mixed up. For your water bath, there's a number of ways to do it, but the easiest way is to just boil the kettle and fill up a beaker with hot water. Put each of your samples into the water bath and then wait for a while. It does take some time for a reaction to occur, but if we watch this speed it up, you can see that one of our samples is clearly turning a kind of yellowy orange colour, and this indicates the presence of a reducing sugar. When we put them back into the test tube rack, we can see the fruit juice is the only one that's actually reacted to this, suggesting that it contains reducing sugars. So, to summarise, we use Benedict's reagent to test for the presence of reducing sugars. Add several drops to your samples and then put them into a water bath. Depending on how much reducing sugar is present, it'll first turn green, then yellow, then orange, and it could form a brick red precipitate if there is a lot of sugar present. The ethanol emulsion test is the test for the presence of fats. First, you need to measure out 2 cm cubed of ethanol and pour that into each of your samples. With each one, you need to shake it vigorously. After you've shaken your samples, add 2 cm cubed of water, and then observe the changes. Here in our oil sample, you can see this sort of white cloudiness formed. This is what's known as the emulsion. To summarise, we use the ethanol emulsion test for the presence of fats. Add 2 cm cubed of ethanol and then shake, followed by 2 cm cubed of distilled water. A white emulsion forms if fats are present. We use DCPIP or DCPIP to test for the presence of vitamin C. Fill your test tubes up with DCPIP without your samples present in them. Then, add your samples into it drops at a time and shake as you're doing it. The DCPIP might turn pinky purple first, this is because of the acidity and doesn't reflect vitamin C being present. Keep adding your sample and shaking. If vitamin C is present, you'll notice that your DC pip turns colourless. Repeat this process for each of your samples. When we make a final comparison, we can see that the fruit juice is the only one that has turned the DC pip colourless. So, we use DC PIP to test for the presence of vitamin C. 
we add our sample to DC pip while shaking it, and the DC pip will turn colourless if vitamin C is present.